Action News, Delaware Valley's leading news program with meteorologist Adam Joseph, Deuces Rogers, Shari Williams, and Brian Taff. This is how it looks from space. A monster of a storm bearing down on Texas tonight with what will be catastrophic results. As night falls, Hurricane Harvey is lumbering ashore. The damage it will leave behind yet to be fully determined. It is Friday night. Shari's off and the big story on Action News tonight is that huge and historic storm making landfall as we speak. A live look right now at Corpus Christi, Texas. Harvey has been upgraded now to a category four hurricane. That would make it the first major hurricane to hit Texas in 18 years and the strongest storm to make landfall in America in more than a decade. ABC's Lana Zack on the ground in Houston tonight as Texas gets ready for the worst. She has more now on our developing story. Good evening. The eye wall of Hurricane Harvey has started to make landfall here on the Texas coast. Already in Corpus Christi, Texas, more than 30,000 people are without power and things are only expected to get worse. Winds are whipping, rain is falling, and the water is getting choppy along the Gulf Coast. But this is nothing compared to what experts say coastal residents of Texas, Mississippi, and Louisiana will experience after Hurricane Harvey hits later tonight. Think of your life first. The most important thing that we're dealing with right now is human life. Among the concerns, massive flooding, three feet of rain in some areas, storm surges projected to reach up to 12 feet, and with all of that flooding, widespread power outages. This storm is not going to play out overnight. When the power goes off, you can expect it to be off three to seven days. Voluntary and mandatory evacuations are in effect. The message heard over and over again, don't risk it storm could change and as they've said they're not going to come rescue rescue here in Houston highway warnings tell drivers to prepare absolute insanity over this hurricane while in Corpus Christi all of the tiniest new residents have been successfully relocated children's health tweeting praise for their support teams that evacuated their NICU there now folks here in Houston are also concerned about the potential for a one two punch that there is massive flooding that occurs as soon as the storm makes landfall here later tonight but that the storm might also move back out to the Gulf Coast as meteorologists are now projecting re-energize itself and then cause a direct hit on the city come Wednesday. Reporting from Houston, Lana Zach, Action News at 10 on PHL 17. Back to you. All right, Lana, thank you. This storm has 16 million Americans in its path. It is poised to make for a long and very difficult weekend, to say the very least. Meteorologist Cecily Tyne, and for Adam Joseph tonight. And Cecily, making matters worse, Harvey is moving painfully slowly. That's exactly right. This is something you don't want to see. This is a strengthening storm system. As they get stronger, they can transport more of the powerful winds to the surface, and it's also decreased its forward speed. It's moving northwest now at 8 miles per hour, and you can see that the eye wall and that's the region of the strongest winds is moving ashore, but official landfall is not until the center of the eye wall actually moves inland. So it hasn't made landfall yet, but you can see on radar her copious amounts of rain already pulling in the heavy rain all the way over Louisiana. And the problem with the storm, as I've been talking about for days, is that once it does make landfall, it will just sit there. It'll lose its steering currents and that will create a tremendous storm surge, a lot of rain, for days and days. I wanted to show you the wind gusts. However, they're so strong, they've actually knocked out the reporting station in Rockport and Corpus Christi. We do have Galveston reporting 43 mile an hour wind gusts, a storm surge expected up to 12 feet. But really with this storm, the most dangerous aspect is the rain. It's been a long time since the Category 4 hurricane with maximum steam was 130 miles an hour has hit land. Last time one hit Carla was or Texas was Carla back in 1961. The last Cat 4 to hit anywhere in the U.S. was Charlie back in 2004. And the last major hurricane to hit the U.S. was 12 years ago. And we're looking at rainfall that could be up to about a year's worth of rain in a matter of several days. I'll talk more about this storm. Also talk about our fall like 
weekend in the full AccuWeather the forecast. Brian. All right, uh, historic in all the wrong ways, Cecily. Exactly. Thank you. Uh, even mo the, this storm is more than 1,500 miles away. It will have an impact right here at home. Tonight, the local Red Cross is packed. Their trucks are. They are on standby. And the call center is already getting hurricane calls from people who want to help. The Red Cross regional CEO says the best way to do so is to give blood or give cash by phone, online, or text. If you can give blood, giving blood here matters. We will get it to the people who need it. Now, a handful of Red Cross volunteers from Philadelphia is en route to Texas tonight. Also, Philadelphia firefighter Lieutenant Ken Pagurik, an urban search and rescue expert, also going to be part of a federal task force. The National Weather Service says parts of South Texas could be left uninhabitable for weeks or maybe months. We're coming up in live report at 1030 tonight. We'll continue our coverage of Hurricane Harvey. We were at Philadelphia International Airport today as Texans fleeing that storm arrived. We'll hear from some of them coming up tonight. And of course, we invite you to stick with Action News for continuing coverage all through the weekend as this hurricane makes landfall and beyond. We'll have updates on air and online on 6abc.com. Other news tonight, several families are homeless tonight after a raging three alarm fire ripped through a Delaware County apartment building today. The fire was so huge and caused so much damage, the building was immediately torn down. Action News reporter Trish Hartman live this evening on, uh, on the scene in Sharon Hill. And uh, Trish, you've got the details tonight. Hi, Brian. Yeah, that fire was placed under control around 9 p.m. You can see what's left of it behind me. Crews used an excavator to demolish the building, spraying down hot spots as they went. 14 people have been displaced and dozens of others have been evacuated from nearby buildings. Diana Ruzat lived on the third floor of the apartment building on Sharon Avenue and says she lost everything. I left to walk my dog and next thing you know, my uh, boyfriend's here and pop, pop, pop. He's like, there's smoke coming from your apartment. And I like, I ran as fast as I could. Crews responded to reports of an explosion at the back of the building around 2.30 p.m. One resident was taken to the hospital for smoke inhalation. Flames shot from the roof and thick smoke flooded the area. When I came out, only thing you could see was all this black smoke. So you couldn't come through. You have to take the long way around. The whole neighborhood just, it was like a smoke bomb went off. You couldn't see anything. Angela Costa lived on the third floor, too. She was at work when the fire started, and her two cats, Tigger and Alexander, are presumed dead. I hope they didn't suffer much, though. I hope that they went quick if they're, if they're going to go. Six apartments made up the three-story building. Crews used a drone to get an aerial view of the fire. Officials say it's the first time they've used the county-owned drone to help fight a fire. I'm sure you've seen they've been back here a lot looking at this and getting the plans from the building. It gives them a whole aerial overview on how much damage is in there, actually. As the blaze continued to burn into the night, an excavator started tearing down the walls to give firefighters better access access to the flames. The American Red Cross is helping all of the residents who now have to find a new place to live. Well, I guess it'll be a whole new fresh start. More than seven hours after the blaze started, firefighters are still out here working. A cause is being investigated. We're live in Sharon Hill. Trish Hartman for Action News at 10 on PHL 17. Brian. All right, Trish, thank you. New here tonight, the driver accused of hitting and killing a woman with an SUV in Center City has now been identified. Philadelphia police have issued an arrest warrant for 35-year-old Brandon Hay. He is thought to be the man seen in previously released images. 53-year-old Ann Broderick died along the 1300 block of Race Street earlier this month after being hit by a white Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. A tip led investigators to that Jeep, you see it there, in Collingdale, Delaware County. Mayor Jim Kenney's new policy to release the names of officers and police involved shootings has been blocked tonight. A judge has issued a temporary injunction putting that policy on hold. The Fraternal Order of Police went to court today seeking that order after Black Lives Matter protesters demonstrated outside a police officer's home in Northeast Philadelphia last night. Now, this order prevents the release of officers' names unless specifically approved by the judge. That will hold until a full hearing on the issue which is set for next month. In South Jersey, the former chief of the Audubon Park Volunteer Fire Company 
is heading to prison. Today, a Camden County judge ordered a six year sentence for John Turusso. That sentence follows the 46 year old's guilty plea on child pornography charges. Prosecutors say he used a fire station computer to view and distribute the disturbing images and videos. After serving his sentence, Teruso will be forced to register as a sex offender. Demonstrators showed up today to rally in support of Pennsylvania Senator Pat Toomey. The supporters gathered outside Toomey's office in Old City, Philadelphia, as a show of thanks for fighting for Republican values. They say they wanted to counter the protests against Toomey that have been held weekly since the election. A memorial service for the late New Jersey State Senator Jim Whalen has now been set. The family will receive guests beginning at 10 a.m. Thursday, September 14th at Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City. The service will begin at 11.30. That's according to Whalen's Facebook page. The popular former mayor of Atlantic City died Tuesday of a heart attack. Governor Chris Christie has ordered that flags be flown at half staff on the day of his service. Much more ahead here at 10 o'clock tonight. North Korea has reportedly flexed their military muscles again. We've got the details. Plus tense moments today at Buckingham Palace when a knife-wielding man attacked an officer. And President Trump has signed an order banning certain individuals from joining the armed services tonight. Plus meteorologist Cecily Tynan back with the full AccuWeather weather forecast when Action News at 10 comes right back. We are following some more breaking news tonight. Reports that North Korea has fired several unidentified projectiles in what appears to be its latest weapons test. South Korea says its military is analyzing this launch tonight. This is file video. This comes just amid a rapid expansion of North Korea's nuclear arsenal and, of course, amid weeks of provocation against the United States. Two British police officers were injured while arresting a man outside Buckingham Palace. Police say the man stopped his car near a police vehicle outside the mall roundabout. That's when officers spotted a knife in his car and went to arrest him. But during the course of detaining the man, the two male police officers were injured. The Queen was not at Buckingham Palace at the time of that incident. Well, after hinting of a pardon at a fiery rally on Tuesday night in Phoenix, President Donald Trump has followed through. Tonight, Mr. Trump pardoned controversial former Arizona Sheriff Joe Arpaio. The 85-year-old had been convicted of criminal contempt for refusing to stop imprisoning suspected illegal immigrants. In a statement, the White House said Arpaio is a worthy candidate for a presidential pardon because of his 50 years of service to the nation. This is President Trump's first pardon in office. Also due tonight, President Trump has directed the Pentagon to ban transgender people from joining the military. At this point, Mr. Trump has left open the possibility that those already serving could remain. The president says that the decision will be left up ultimately to Defense Secretary Jim Mattis. President Trump left the White House for a weekend at Camp David today, but he's tweeted as recently as minutes ago that he's closely monitoring Hurricane Harvey and is ready to assist as needed. The president's advisors say he is keeping in touch with the governors of Texas and Louisiana. Mr. Trump may travel to that region next week as conditions on the ground warrant. Well, of course, a lot of our focus tonight has been on the weather in Texas, but here a, a dramatically different story as we're looking ahead, Cecily, to a really nice weekend. Exactly. Harvey is coming ashore in Texas. It's yeah. a Cat 4 hurricane, but we've got high pressure here. We have the opposite, yes. and that yeah. will bring us beautiful weather this weekend. Let's go live on Sky 6 in our Weather Center, taking a look at the Commodore Berry Bridge on this very comfortable night. A little bit on the cool side if you're out on this Friday night. You actually want a jacket or a sweatshirt. And the AccuWeather highlights will show you that, yes, it is feeling a lot like September and our last weekend of August. And we are in a dry spell, which is really rare for this summer. This summer has been extraordinarily wet and no more 90 degree weather for the rest of this month. Temperatures will remain on the cool side. Right now, Philadelphia 71 degree or 73 degrees down from her high of 79. Didn't even hit 80 today. Allentown already down to 64 degrees. Atlantic City Airport 68. Trenton 68 and Dover also 68 degrees. Popular number. Dew points also extremely low. Typically in August, you get dew points in the 60s and 70s. We have dew points in the 50s and 40s, so that's very comfortable. We will stay there 
right through the weekend and early next week and good amount of sunshine. Satellite radar showing we did cloud up this afternoon. A little bit of a weak disturbance called a short wave is moving through. That'll continue to push to the east. High pressure building in behind that and that means we've got a glorious weekend tonight. Another great night for sleeping. You don't need the air conditioners at all. 61 degrees in Philadelphia, Allentown 53. The Poconos dropping into the 40s tonight. Cape May 63 and Wilmington 60 degrees and planning out your day. It'll definitely be on the cool side tomorrow at 7 o'clock. Lots of sunshine by 1 o'clock 76 degrees. A few fair weather clouds will be drifting in as we head into the afternoon and again temperatures stuck in the 70s about 79 degrees for the high. That's 5 degrees below normal. If you're down the shore, enjoy it. Put lots of sunscreen on. Keep reapplying. The UV index will be high tomorrow. 76 degrees. Philadelphia again, 79. The Pocono, 69 degrees. Loads of sunshine, pleasantly cool. And if you're heading to watch the Union game tomorrow night, mainly clear and comfortable at the start of the game, 75 by the 90th minute, the finish down to 70 degrees. Our luck will eventually run out. I'll let you know when and have an update on Hurricane Harvey coming up in the exclusive AccuWeather 7 day forecast. Brian. All right, Cecily, thank you. And the approach of Hurricane Harvey has forced British rockers Coldplay to postpone their concert in Houston. The band was set to play the NRG Stadium tonight. The group says they are ready to play, but they would not want anyone to risk their life to come out to see them. We are back now with a live look at Corpus Christi, Texas tonight, where the outer eye wall of that massive storm, Hurricane Harvey, has come ashore. Technically, that Category 4 hurricane will not have made landfall until the center of the eye crosses uh, the land. But again, this is a right in the bullseye of the path of this epic and historic storm. 130 mile an hour winds, and as the outer edge here comes ashore, you can see just the effect it is having, ravaging winds. No doubt set to leave a lot of damage behind. We'll follow this throughout the newscast here tonight. In the meantime, these warriors in pink are taking a well-deserved break. They completed the first day of the Susan G. Komen Philadelphia three-day walk to fight breast cancer. The group took off from Willow Grove Park Mall this morning. They walked about 20 miles. The walk will end Sunday at the Philadelphia Navy Yard. Health check at 10 o'clock. Are you trying to quit eating sweets? Your morning cup of coffee could be making it harder. A study published in the Journal of Food Science found that caffeine affects receptors in the brain that decrease your ability to taste sweetness. Well, that in turn could make you desire more sugar. Researchers say this does not mean to ditch your beloved brew, but it can't hurt to be more mindful of caffeine's effects on your appetite and perhaps how much of it you consume. All right, time for the first check of sports tonight. Sports director uh, Deuces Rogers joining us here as the Phillies take on the Cubs in South Philadelphia. The bats are alive yeah. and the pitching is sharp. Wow. Good news tonight. The hits keep on coming for the Phillies. After dropping three out of four to the Marlins, the Phillies entertain the World Series champion Cubs. Cool uniforms as part of MLB's Players Weekend. Bottom of the first inning, Reese Hoskins. You've got to be kidding me. The rookie does it again. His ninth homer in 16 games. He's the fastest in MLB history to get to nine. Fills up 2-1. Second inning, bases full of Phillies. Cesar Hernandez is trying to get a couple home. How about all three? It's a three-run triple for Hernandez. The Phillies lead 5-1. Jared Eikhoff works out of trouble all night long. Fourth inning, a strikeout to get out of a jam. Fifth inning, bases loaded. Wiggles out again. Eikhoff strikes out eight and five innings of work. The Phillies win 7-1. Coach Doug Peterson says he's pleased with what he, ha what he saw last night. He should be. The first team offense the first team on both offense and defense had their moments against the Miami Dolphins. The Eagles defense forced Miami into four turnovers. Vinny Curry forced the fumble on the opening drive. Carson Wentz then threw two first quarter touchdown passes. This one to new wide receiver Alshon Jeffrey. That capped a nine play 93 yard drive and that made the coach happy. Yeah, you'd love to have that type of balance, you know, anytime, um, you know, run and pass and, and, and kind of keep the defense off off balance a little bit and, and get we get the quarterback on the move and pocket and uh, it was great to go down and, and score and obviously finish off that drive. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's definitely a, a sort of a blueprint to, to what you'd like to see during the regular season. One more preseason game on Thursday against the Jets and then the season opener September 10th at Washington. All right, time to get it all together yes. is running out. Deuces, thanks. More activities at 10 coming up after this. 
Philadelphia-based nonprofit group is spreading the word about the benefits of health screenings. The foundation opened its doors today, offering information to the public. Children took part in yoga classes and face painting. They also manned a pop-up lemonade stand to help people fighting liver disease. Good for them. Philadelphia police are investigating the discovery of a bust in South Philadelphia. And frightening video shows a big rig with its bucket raised, striking a trestle over a Texas freeway. Plus, the young seal recovering from the Jersey Shore of a brutal shark attack will take you uh, inside his progress. Those stories are much more when Action News comes right back. Action News at 10.30 on VHL 17 continues with Deuces Rogers, meteorologist Adam Joseph, Shari Williams, and Brian Taff. Hello again, 1030 now, and we begin with a recap of the big story we're following right here on Action News tonight. Hurricane Harvey, now a dangerous Category 4. Just hours from officially making landfall on the Texas coast, the National Hurricane Center says Harvey has maximum sustained winds of 130 miles an hour. The Weather Service said a hurricane warning is in effect for about one and a half million people. Texas Governor Greg Abbott warned of record-setting flooding and called on people to flee the area before the storm hits. Right now at 10.30, tens of thousands of people fled from the path of that hurricane today as it gains strength and continues to take aim at the Texas Gulf Coast. We caught up with a few of those people tonight and Action News reporter Jeff Chirico live now at the Philadelphia International Airport with some of their stories, Jeff. Hey, Brian, many of the folks we spoke with already had plans to come to Philadelphia. Some of them moved up their flights a day or two to avoid being stranded. And while they're out of Harvey's way, their thoughts are with those still in Texas. I feel pretty lucky to be getting out of there just in time for that. University of Pennsylvania student Jennifer Lee is counting her blessings. She's among those who got what may be one of the final flights out of Houston for days. She'll start classes next week while her family in Texas rides out a potentially catastrophic storm. Definitely concerned. Um, yeah, everyone's kind of pretty concerned about like all the, what's going to happen during the storm, the level of flooding, and like what's going to happen afterwards. As flights arrive from Houston, passengers express uncertainty about what they'll see when they return. We live north of the city, so our we're, we're home's fine. But in the, the people who are in the city, in the apartments, on the streets, they're going to be not in, a good, not in good shape if the storm stays. The boards don't show it, but airlines have preemptively grounded more than 200 weekend flights across the country, waiving rebooking fees as many travelers scramble to get out. My flight was full, and they were offering people to volunteer to stay back. Did anyone volunteer? I, I don't think so. I'm extremely concerned. With the storm approaching, Marty Dugan cut short his trip to San Antonio to see his daughter's family. He'll be watching the storm from afar, but remains optimistic they'll be spared the worst of it. They have a nice home. They're on high ground, so I think they'll be okay. Well, major airlines are offering travel vouchers for passengers to rebook flights to affected areas. For details on that and on the status of flights uh, this upcoming weekend and over the next few days, you're urged to check the airline's website. Reporting live at Philadelphia International, Jeff Cherico for Action News at 10 on PHL 17. Brian? All right, wishing all of them and their families the very best, Jeff. Thank you. Let's uh, turn now to meteorologist Cecily Tynan, who's in for Adam Joseph tonight. She's keeping an eye on the very uh, latest track of this. And Cecily, in fact, you have some new information in yes, now. Yes, and I, I want to show you double scan live radar yeah. because what we've done, we, I've zoomed in on the storm and you can see how that eye wall is really moving ashore right near Rockport, Texas. It's moving right over Barrier Island. Now, fortunately, as far as landfall, this is not a highly populated area, but it is just northeast of Corpus Christi, and we've already had wind gusts reporting of 120 miles an hour, and some areas already reporting five inches of rain, and this storm is just beginning to impact Texas. So Hurricane Harvey, it was a Category 3 earlier. It's now a Category 4 hurricane, which is very unusual. We haven't had a Cat 4 hurricane hit Texas since 1961. Maximum steam was 130 miles an hour. Pressure is plummeting, and it's slowing its forward pace. So that's bad news. You don't want a storm system to just stall, and that's what it's going to do. Maximum wind gusts now 155 miles per hour. So a Category 4 on the Saffir-Simpson scale is the 
second highest category. Maximum stain winds 130 to 156 miles per hour. But as I've been saying all along, it's not just the wind, it's not the storm surge. It's the fact the storm is going to be sitting there and that is going to bring a tremendous flooding. So this is what we look at as far as spaghetti plots. You've probably seen this and this goes into Friday and you can see it's just a hot mess. They just have the storm system kind of rotating. Once it moves ashore, it's actually going to get trapped there. There's high pressure up to the north and west. There's no steering flow, so this likely will meander much of next week. And what that will do is bring tremendous rain, more than 30 inches of rain in parts. And also, since it's not just going to die out, it will continue continue to produce that storm surge that will cause a lot of coastal flooding. So back at home, we've got the opposite. We have very quiet, very comfortable weather. 73 in Philadelphia. Pocono is already down to 53, Cape May 73, and Wilmington 69. So satellite and radar showing we did have some cloud cover building in the afternoon. Still partly cloudy skies. The clouds will continue to push to the east. High pressure building in. That will bring us clearing skies tonight. Cool and comfortable. 53 in the suburbs, about 61 for Center City. And tomorrow and Sunday. Basically picture perfect weather. Double barrel high pressure over us. Temperatures running about five degrees below normal for this time of the year. 79 degrees. Loads of sunshine if you're down the shore. The ocean temperature 75. The air temperature pretty close to that. You'll have a sea breeze. Abundant sunshine 76 on Saturday and Sunday 75. And you're heading to the Poconos. Definitely do want to grab a sweatshirt or jacket. Overnight lows dropping into the 40s. Saturday 69 degrees and Sunday loads of sunshine with a high of 70. So the exclusive accurate with our 7 day forecast tomorrow. Sunny, pleasant, 79 degrees. Great weather for any of your activities. Sunday, just as nice, 79. Monday, add a little bit of cloud cover, 77 degrees. And Tuesday, mostly cloudy. We drop the temperature down to 75 degrees. Possibility of a shower. We keep that threat of showers on Wednesday, 76. Thursday, mixture of clouds and sunshine, 82 degrees with a chance of a shower. And Friday, partly sunny with a high of 79 degrees. And that is the kickoff for Labor Day weekend. At this point, it's looking good. The one thing I will have to watch, the remnant moisture of Harvey. Some of the computer models have been showing it moving up to the northeast. At this point, we're talking about more than a week away. It's too early to call yeah. it. It's something I'll continue to track. Okay, we certainly will be watching. Cecily, thank you. And, of course, we uh, encourage and invite you to stick with Action News throughout the weekend for continuing coverage of Hurricane Harvey as it approaches the Gulf Coast. We'll have the latest updates both on air and online on 6abc.com. Police are working to find out what caused a nasty one car crash in southwest Philadelphia. Police say the driver lost control, left the road and hit a tree this afternoon. Chopper 6 was over the crash along the 5600 block of Broomall Street just after 2 o'clock. The driver eventually came to a stop against the front porch of a house. The damage to that car was extensive. Debris was littered everywhere, but no word on the condition of the driver tonight. A playground in Delaware was defaced with racist graffiti. Newcastle County police are now searching for the vandals who spray painted Ku Klux Klan symbols on the equipment. A family found the graffiti yesterday. County park staff cleaned and reopened that park today. Here's something you don't see every day. A cyclist spotted riding among the commuters on the Schuylkill Expressway today. An Action News producer on her way to work snapped this picture of the guy just riding between the left and center lanes. The scene caused delays as drivers tried to avoid hitting the cyclist during the height of the morning rush. Well, police eventually caught up with him and took him into custody. As of right now, he has not been charged with any crime. A stolen bronze bust of a Civil War era military commander was discovered this morning, abandoned beneath an Interstate 95 overpass. But now, how and why it was stolen in the first place has left Philadelphia police scratching their heads. Action News reporter Gray Hall has the story. I think there was some work done uh, to get this thing unsecured from the arch and then, like I said, to get it transported um, to where it ended up. Honestly, I, I just, you know, I have no idea. It's a mystery that even has the Philadelphia Parks and Recreation Commissioner scratching her head 
Who stole the James Beaver bus from the Smith Memorial Arch in Fairmount Park Thursday night? She admits whoever took it had their work cut out for them. That's the real mystery. We we think that it's around four feet tall and 300 pounds. Um, you know, this is not the kind of thing that you can throw in the back of your pickup truck. So um, we're a little stymied about how in the world someone got up 12 feet high. Someone discovered the bus Friday morning under the I-95 overpass near FDR Park. At this point, there are no clear answers as to who took it, what they did it with, and why. Those hearing about the theft are just as puzzled as employees with Parks and Recreation. It's very strange, and I don't really know what to make of it, or even if this is the last we'll hear of such an act. I don't think it is, unfortunately. I just, I don't understand the meaning why they would do it. What did they gain from it, you know? Especially if you just dumped Daddy. it a few blocks down the street. Daddy. Well, you know, I don't understand. It's just crazy out here right there. The bust was installed in the early 1900s, and leaders with Parks and Recreation say they don't know of any controversy surrounding General Beaver. Unlike recent controversies with Confederate monuments in our area and across this country, General Beaver served in the Union Army, making the theft even more bizarre. I can't say whether or not this has any kind of connection to recent events that have happened. Um, it wouldn't be the first time that we've had a piece of public work or sculpture uh, vandalized or stolen. Police tell us they are investigating this crime. Parks and Recreation also says there was some damage to this sculpture. They're working to repair that and hopefully return it to its rightful home. Reporting in Fairmount Park, Gray Hall for Action News at 10 on PHL 17. And still ahead here on Action News at 10 tonight, a young gray seal is being cared for after being attacked by a shark. A shocking video shows a big rig knocking over a highway sign in Texas. Plus, a cheerleader who released video of the alleged abuse from her coach is under fire tonight. The stories are much more when we come right back. We've got some frightening new video out of Houston, Texas tonight. A big rig with its bucket raised slammed into the framework of a highway sign, causing the entire metal trussle to fall on the truck. The driver's condition is not yet known tonight. Police reopened that highway after clearing the wreckage. A couple of thieves left some children feeling very disappointed. A birthday party was canceled after two men stole a bounce house rented by the hosts. The two men were caught on surveillance camera struggling with that inflatable. Their reason for taking it is pretty obvious to the mom who paid for it. It was so expensive they could make a profit out of that. Pretty disappointed about it. Well, to add insult to injury, a stereo was also stolen from the backyard. and The family now has to pay the rental company to replace the bounce house that they never got to use. A Colorado high school cheerleader who filmed herself and her squad mates being forced into painful splits by a coach now says she's experienced online bullying since the videos went public. Allie Wakefield says she's been told to kill herself by some people online. She says she does not regret speaking out. Denver East high school cheerleading coach Ozell Williams was placed on administrative leave as a result of what those videos showed. From our New Jersey newsroom tonight, a nasty shark bite has a young gray seal receiving life-saving care by the folks who are best equipped to bring that seal back to health. New Jersey correspondent Yorm Mishanik was there today. This is the newest resident at the Marine Mammal Stranding Center in Brigantine. The badly bitten young gray seal is being nursed back to health after being attacked by a shark. The injured female was found by rangers at Sandy Hook State Park. Their flesh wounds, wounds right now it went through the skin down into the blubber layer, but luckily didn't hit into the muscle or internal organ. It's no surprise that there are sharks in the water off New Jersey. Remember Mary Lee? She's the 3,400 pound great white who's constantly tracked by an organization called OSEARCH. You can see from this zigzagging graph, she spends a lot of time off New Jersey in search of food. In early spring, we had, we had Mary Lee here in, off of Brigantine, right where the seals are in the wintertime, so she knows where the seals are. A beach on Cape Cod, Massachusetts was closed Wednesday when a paddleboarder had a close encounter with a shark. He wasn't injured, but his paddleboard has a line of teeth marks where the shark bit down. I always think about sharks when I go in the water because we know they're here. We know they're, you know, in the waters here. I don't think it would stop me from going out kayaking or paddleboarding because that's something that I, I like to do, but it definitely, uh, it comes to mind. It grabs right like that and the size of the bite was probably 
the animal had its mouth open about a foot or so. Bob Chelkoff says it was probably a young great white shark like this that took the bite out of that seal. She and another injured harbor seal are under constant monitoring at the stranding center. It'll take a couple months, but the hope is that this seal can recover and return to the ocean. In Brigantine, I'm Nora Mushanik for Action News at 10 on PHL 17. We have been monitoring various live pictures coming out of Texas tonight. Here's another that we've just found showing the intensity of the wind and the rain as Hurricane Harvey comes ashore there just north of Corpus Christi, Texas, a category four storm winds nearing 140 miles per hour tonight. And of course, we'll continue to follow this and monitor these feeds and bring you the story right here on Action News tonight and through the weekend. While we are far from the path of Hurricane Harvey, we will feel its effect with a rise in gas prices. That's because there are more than a dozen refineries that are directly in that storm's path. They are responsible for producing 4 million barrels of oil. Production to some of those facilities is being shut down until Harvey safely passes. And that could mean an increase in gas prices for the upcoming Labor Day holiday. All right, time once again for sports today. Uh, Deuces Rogers going to give my voice a break for the next couple of minutes. <laughs> All right, I'll talk Phillies. Thank you. You can just watch and enjoy yeah. these highlights. The Phillies get good pitching tonight, but that's overshadowed by the super rookie. Phillies and Cubs tonight. Cool uniforms as part of MLB's Players Weekend. Bottom of the first inning, Reese Hoskins. You've got to be kidding me. He does it again. His ninth home run in 16 games. He's the fastest in MLB history to get to nine. That prompts Eagles QB Carson Wentz to tweet, quote, been pretty busy with training camp lately, but my goodness, this dude, Reese Hoskins, is killing it for the Phillies. Fire emojis. <laughs> Second inning, bases full of Phillies. Cesar Hernandez trying to get a couple home. How about all three? It's a three-run, bases clearing triple. The Phillies lead 5-1. Jared Eikhoff works out of trouble all night. He strikes out eight in five innings. The Phillies win 7-1. Here's Hoskins. Yeah, you get into those zones, you know. Um, you can't really explain it. There's a lot of just uh, bliss, I guess. No, no thinking involved. Um, yeah, it's just one of those things, and I'm not missing it. It's awesome. All right, with so many new parts on offense, the Eagles have been thinking chemistry. They had some last night against Miami. Carson Wentz connected with both of his new targets in the first quarter. First, the 50-yard bomb to Torrey Smith. That was Smith's first catch of the preseason. Later, Wentz found Alshon Jeffrey on a 15-yard touchdown pass. The first-team offense looked better, but the players still want more consistency. Things still weren't as clean as they needed to be, but I um, think we've made some, again, so there were some good things on film, and obviously some things that, you know, we're going to have some long conversations about, but I think now, you know, the best thing is that, you know, made it through for healthy for the most part, and uh, we can really dial in on the Redskins for the next couple weeks. The Philadelphia Soul are on the brink of back-to-back -back championships. Today was media day for Arena Bowl 30. The Soul will host the Tampa Bay Storm tomorrow night at the Wells Fargo Center. As you can imagine, Soul co-owner Ron Jaworski is just as pumped up as the players are. Everyone is all lathered up for a great, great game, but we expect to win. You know, it'd be good to, to win 18 straight at home, but we're, we're just trying to go 1-0. You know, it's been a wonderful, wonderful run we've, hunt, we've had. Uh, and our fans are a big, uh, big part of that, so it would be wonderful to, to get it done. In Philadelphia, it's the first week of high school football. LaSalle visiting North Penn. A great crowd on hand to watch two of the area's top-ranked teams. LaSalle QB Isaiah Jones keeps it himself for the touchdown. LaSalle wins 41-28. Ridley and Father Judge. The play of the night occurs on this kickoff. Father Judge's Katab Joseph has some blockers. He has a lane. And he's gone. An 87-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. But it's not enough. Ridley wins 38-20. to It's the night before the big fight. Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGregor both made weight today in Las Vegas tomorrow night. It's the undefeated boxer against the MMA fighter. Some trash talking during the weigh-in. Tomorrow the fists will be doing the talking. McGregor's a, a little outspoken. <laughs> It's close talking. Some spit going back. It's very uncomfortable. Hey, fair. Deuces, thank you. Uh, more Action News, your wake-up forecast coming up next. <laughs> I so want it. All right, one more live look at the scene in Texas tonight as a reporter steps into the live shot, giving us some context here uh, into the whipping winds that we're seeing as Hurricane Harvey, Category 4, comes ashore just north of Corpus Christi.
Cecily. It's doing so right now. I want to show you our yeah. radar and you can see how the center of that eye wall is pulling ashore near Rockport, which is northeast of course Corpus Christi. It's a small beach town, less than 10,000 population. However, as we widen, you can see the scope of the storm system. It's massive. This likely will be the biggest disaster since Hurricane Hugo back in 1989. This is going to be a story for a long time. So better news our weather this weekend. We've got high pressure in control, loads of sunshine both days, temperatures in the upper 70s, low humidity. Enjoy it as we continue to track Hurricane Harvey causing a lot of problems across Texas. Yeah, and of course, stick with Action News throughout the weekend for live coverage as that uh, situation unfolds. Cecily, thank you, and thank you for joining us tonight for Action News at 10. Modern Families next, followed by friends. Now for Shari Williams, Adam Joseph, Cecily Tynan, Jesus Rogers, the entire Action News team. I'm Brian Taft. Have a great night, great weekend. We'll see you back here tomorrow.